Namaste. How are you doing? Despite teaching yoga for many years, I still write and rehearse my classes. Yeah. Although the techniques I teach come from my experience, I have to make sure that I modify them in a way that they suit my students' abilities and differences. And there's something about not just writing it, but doing yeah, the class, even its conceptual structure, yeah, because through that, your mind remembers, yeah, and you can give a well-prepared, meaningful sessions yeah, uh, to your students. Yeah. For example, yeah, this quarter, I'm focusing more on creating lightness, openness, and mobility. And then when it comes to that goal, yeah, the aim is to open yeah, the sockets of the hips. Yeah, well, that's how I feel it. When my hips are open, the body is light. The weight of the body is in the hips. Yeah, and energetically, the hips are like the dwelling place of our primal energy, the apanabhayu, yeah, which if we're able to reverse its downward flow and direct it upwards through asana and pranayama, we can increase our energy level. So for today, let me share with you the conceptual structure of the class I will be doing soon. Yeah. So I would normally start, yeah, and this uh, can be applied not only in hip openers, but across yeah, the different uh, categories or types of asana. Yeah. Prone position. The position of the Matsya Kridasana. Right, so just bending one knee to the side, extend the other side long. You can fold the elbows, so keep the arms long. And then folding that extended leg and then circle the knees around. And right away this position, yeah, as you flow, yeah, the legs here, yeah, you can feel yeah, the gentle opening of your hip joints already. And this is relaxing. Yeah, it's a way of centering the breath and the mind too. And then you can synchronize the breath here as the foot circles close to your buttock. Inhale. And as the foot moves away, exhale. And then just reversing. And, and you open the knees as well here. And it's also a light side stretch. And then when you're lying prone, meaning the belly is down, the lungs can breathe yeah, lighter. And you attain a higher potential of your respiratory functions. And you can find that leg from side to side, like the leg waves. And then adjust the other body parts affected as you flow. You can extend that arm. You can lightly swim that leg. And then, and then for a moment, you can rest that foot nice and close to your backside. As a teacher, it's a duty for our students to give them a progressive and most importantly, safe practice. What's the use of visualizing a very elaborate, complex, fancy asana if yeah, when we teach them, we can't even, you know, uh, teach how to properly and safely, progressively do them. Yeah? And then by practicing, you will be able to do that. All right. And then from there, I will just flip over. Yeah. Okay. And then just allow the legs to move in a like zigzag motion. And then here you are already opening the lower spine. Good. And allow yeah, the body to rest here. Yeah, you can also change the positioning of the arms. You can cup them under the head. And then bit by bit, once the hips feel light, you can lift them up already. All right. Mobility around the lower spine now and then warming the oblique muscles, and this also stretches the lateral part. All right, and I love this variation. Yeah, the swinging of the knee. 
And what it does is stretches the back of the body, the sacrolumbar region, and even yeah, yeah, the shoulder behind you. All right, you can even rub this a few times before you change. I've given a number of tutorials about this. <laughs> so you may want to have a look at those classes. See, you know, appreciate the other variations. And then one more, side to side again. All right. And then from there, crossing the legs, up and down. You know. So when I write my sequence, I will write them in bullets. You know. And then I'm also a spontaneous teacher. Yeah, I practice, but as I flow through the classes, inspiration happens. And then sometimes I need to change an element, but I don't sway too far from my theme. Yeah, so I'll do similar yeah, modifications. All right. And from there, hugging the knees to the chest. Yeah, so like a reverse child's pose. The Mahamudra here. All right, then let the head relax. All right, and from there, flipping over the other side. Good. So we can bend the other knee. Yeah, so it's, we're just changing legs, yeah. Good. And then settle. You can extend the side long, and bend the knee, and circle around. All right, keep going. Also, um, Although my classes are similar, <laughs> they feel different. Well, the reason being, I just don't change from one side to the next. Somehow I flow in between them, yeah, such as this. I just didn't change from the right side to the left. Yeah, I flip over and then that becomes like a transitional, like the break, like the counter sequence from that sequence. It feels good, our energy works that way. Yeah, it's not too linear, yeah, it sways, it spirals. And then circular motion mimic yeah, that nature of the energy inside the side. Yeah. All right, extending the side more, maybe I feel the side is a bit tight, so I will use my other arm to move the side longer. Hmm. All right, then settle a moment. This also is a form of gentle extension of the spine since the body is pouring down towards yeah, the gravity. All right, and then flipping over, just turn around. Okay, and then back to your zigzagging legs. Right in here, I feel like my shoulders, yeah, I like to move the shoulders up. You can lengthen that armpit up and then rub the side once or twice or even more than once. All right, and you can even use the hand there yeah, to open yeah, the inner groin. Okay, and then one per side. And just breathe easy as you do this. Yeah, seemingly <laughs> uncoordinated motion, but feels good inside. And that's one more thing, yeah. What's the purpose of yeah, teaching fancy positions if <laughs> they don't feel right, yeah? That's my principle, yeah. I need to feel it myself. I need to benefit from them myself. So I'm confident of sharing, yeah, the realizations to my students. But of course, since my practice is a bit more advanced, I modify them. I don't force them to do things that I feel they're not ready for, but I challenge them. All right. Okay, if the readiness is there, you can extend that leg to the side. Good. And then the other one. All right. Crossing the legs at the shins. And then up and down, we rock the body. Okay, so generally, normally, yeah, that's the first 10 minutes of my session. Okay, and from there, I will talk to the Garbhasana. Well, and settle. And that already sets the pace, yeah, and the theme, the feeling, the focus of the session. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So for tonight, I thought of like teaching my students um, not so deep hip openness, but quite, uh, I'd say, um, in, intensive. Yeah. More than the normal range of motion. All right, press into it. Okay, and kneeling position, a transition to a mild flexion of the spine and then moving from side to side. All right, so I, I also work again, uh, either top to bottom or bottom to top. And then you know, for today, yeah, I'd like to work from bottom to top. So I've warmed up the lower back already in the hips. Now we're gonna try and energize the core. In this position, you know, the position of the balasana yeah, is, I say, a general practice you know, to attain that purpose. It opens the back. Flexing elements generally work the Manipura Chakra, the core. All right. You can wave from hip to hip. And there are many variations. You can rest on your forearms. Yeah. If you have students yeah, nourishing some knee uh, problems there, you can use a prop yeah, to elevate the hips. Okay. All right, beautiful. And then hands forward, shoulders over the wrist, and then walking the knees in place. All right, spreading the fingers, pushing away to Adhomukha Shvanasana. Okay. Yeah. Such so as releasing tension by walking the heels, and at the same time, mindful breathing to energize the brain. Okay. And the alternate leg lifts are so lifting one leg up and then down and then change. All right. And then the breath here, of course, the breath would have to play an important part of the teaching. As the leg lifts, inhale through it and as you release, exhale. All right. So if you notice, I'm also adjusting my hands you know, so that I can extend the side trunk too. If one leg feels a bit tight there, you can rub it in and out of the joints and then push away and change. All right. And then back to your walking down with dog, bending and stretching. Beautiful. All right. Thread the right knee through between your wrists. Yep. Position called variation of the Ekapada Rajagaputasana or the pigeon stretch. All right. Here we stretch already that. Yeah, have flexor. If this is not happening, you can fold the knee. It's all right. Yeah. Good rubbing from hip to hip. All right. And I'll encourage a little bit of extension through the spine. Inhale, pressing forward, upward, and the mild, yeah, backward motion. And then let the body fall nice and flat on the ground. Again, many variations, a number of variations. You can teach your students. We're still building up flexibility. You can place a padding under that front hip. That way, yeah, the knees remain light and that back hip can easily roll inwards. Yeah, so you can achieve an optimum alignment of the hips. One more thing. If you practice your sequences, you know, yeah, the, the flow, yeah, you can already prepare your yeah, props around you. Yeah. So right away, yeah, you can already assist your student yeah, because you yourself is like, uh, ready and you know, know the sequence yeah, beforehand, stretching forward. I know you might be a spontaneous teacher. I am a spontaneous teacher too. Yeah. But then again, even how spontaneous we are, yeah, Sometimes students come and go, and then you might be faced with you know, a wide you know, array or you know, types of your students. And then by preparing your sequence, you can you know, right away pinpoint you know, where you need you know, to give the modification and then to assist your students too. All right, from there, yeah, some power, pressing. All right, and now we're facing dog. Okay, 
Now, that left leg goes high. Yeah, so I just don't change. Yeah, left leg goes high. This is a creative way of sequencing. And then stepping that left foot through between your hands. All right. And that right heel, which was bent the first time, yeah, turn it out and then externally rotate so we can count the stretch. Yeah, and that side. All right, stretch over and then bending. All right, flow this time. Inhale, exhaling. Breathing in. Now I'm opening the side body, the side trunk, the shoulders. You know, so at the same time, yeah, energizing the legs and then opening the hips. Okay, and from there, yeah, I will just change. So opening that right knee externally and then roll this hip internally and then do a side angle position. Yeah, on this side. All right, my lightly lower and then arch, bending and stretching. All right, from there, yeah, legs remain wide. So let me angle. All right, good. The Prasadita modification, adjusting your legs to a comfortable distance, your balance is supported, and then forward and back. Inhale to the front, exhale to the back. A few of that. Yeah, to level the hips. All right. And then for a moment, settle in the wide leg forward bend. And here we lengthen the side trunk too. Yeah. You can apply a mudra here, a light sealing of the surface of the tongue against the hard palate, dropping the jaw, and then just breathing through your nostrils. You may visualize your breath piercing the front of your head, the forehead between the eyebrows. All right, inhale, open forward. All right, turn your knees and toes wide. Yes, yeah, so we can counter the forward bend. Inhaling, exhale. All right, and the swinging motion. All right, I want you to pay attention with the way I breathe. At the bottom of the, yeah, you inhaled it. Right, and that way, you're drawing the apana already. It's like, yeah, a gentle Uddiyana Banda. All right. You can just stay with the swinging motion or actually spring it up. Inhale. Exhale. One more. All right, from the hands to the earth. All right, roll back to the front of your mat and then squaring that back foot. All right, forward and back, forward and back. All right, and from there, all right, hands down and then stepping to the back and then just walking your dog, marching in place, lifting up and then change other leg. All right, you can also step a little bit wider there and then angle that stepping foot internally. Yeah, so the other leg is already open. And then here, you're not just lifting the leg, you're moving away and then drawing that leg from the thigh bone. Remember, our focus is to mobilize the hip sockets. All right, and then matching the dog, you can shake your hands. All right, breathing in, breathing out. All right, mobility and dynamism. Jumping outside of the hands. Yeah, so the breath, inhaling, and exhaling. All right, so sitting as, the, as low as the hips can. You manage, so you may flip the hands here. Yeah, you're able to lift the heels if there's discomfort. Yeah. And your ankle is a low back. Okay. All right. Position of strength. The Bakasana. Yeah. It's an intermediate practice, but there are many progression. All right. First progression on your tippy toes. And then just your forward and back. Yeah. To the shoulders, to the hands. Yeah. And then to the hips. All right. You can just guide your student yeah, to keep going that. And maybe recover through a downward facing dog once you feel the hips are heavy, or you can progress this all the way up to yeah, one foot bakasana or yeah, both sides. 
and then breathe. Yeah, again, <laughs> I'm not swaying away from the theme. Yeah. Yeah. This promotes lightness, strength, mobility, as yeah, so. dynamism. All right. Feet down. All right. And back to the front of the mat. And then recover. All right. You can lightly sway. All right. A few alternate leg lift. Yeah. Good. And then you can thread that lift knee through to the front. So if you notice, yeah, the sequence is climbing up. Yeah, it's building up. Yeah, it's progressive. Then after the peak, you allow a moment of settling and recovery and restoration to happen. Yeah. Although sometimes I would keep climbing up to the peak, 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 yeah. and I would slowly go down all the way to the finish of the class. Yeah, but for today, I'd like to give them like, yeah, a break in between the peaks. Yeah, and then just breathe here. Right, so yeah, just breathing. Inhale. And exhaling through the nose, inspire the breath in. Through the nose, you exhale the breath out. All right. Beautiful. All right. Press with power. Good. And the other leg lifts. The right leg this time, keep the hips square. All right, and stepping through, all the way to the front, heel down and spiral to the Virabhadrasana number two. Good, and then settle a moment. You can flow your arms up and down here. And this flow, there are many ways of changing it. Yeah, room for like flows in between. You can circle those arms up and down. You can do a triangle if you don't want, if you want to modify instead of the warrior two. You can do the trikonasana position, really depending yeah, on uh, what you see in front of you. All right, and after that next, externally rotate the other leg, roll that hip bone in the, inward. Uh, yeah. Progression for arm, um, ankle, or hand to floor beside the foot. And here you can also flow this one down and up. You can lightly shake that arm. And especially if you're a flow teacher. Yeah. So flow teacher is a creative way of teaching the asana, flowing through them, but you don't want to be swaying and go far away from your goal, traditional ones. Head and then hands down, turn externally, and the other one internal, so you can balance the hips up and down, and you can even walk them closer. All right. but, and then you just fold in the middle. Okay, now, yes, I teach advanced students too. Yeah, I teach beginner students. Now, the first part of the class, I taught them how to flow the beginner. All right, so I will do that again for a few rounds. All right, turn your knees and toes out, and then up and down you go. All right, okay. And I would generally instruct my students, all right, for your, uh, those of you who are not progressing, the next one, and just flowing up and down, and then maybe a recovery to side to side. So you instruct them what to do, yeah, because I will be yeah, guiding my advanced students into the next level, yeah, which is, all right, a variation maybe, yeah, of a handstand or a headstand, uh, something like that, or a pinch of my arasana. So, but for today, I'd like to do, yeah, the uh, hand press, yeah? Or you can do a headstand or a pinch. All right, for now, this is the hand press. Breathing in, pouring your weight forward, shifting, and then lifting up, 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 up. Right. Also, one more thing, yeah, you don't teach an asana you yourself cannot do. So make sure you're able to demo it because you practice it. 
and then even talking through it <laughs> while you're doing it. All right. And then out you go, back to the floor. All right. And then the other students are still blowing this one. And then you can come back here. All right. But of course, if you're doing an advanced position like that, <laughs> you just have to do and then instruct them. Maybe just teach them the basic of it. You don't have to do the handstand yourself because you have to yeah, assist your student yeah, who might be needing. <laughs> Yeah, personalized spotting. <laughs> all right, so it's your skill. Teaching a flow class, all right. Come down, rotate to the front, and stretching high and back to downward dog. All right, so for those <laughs> who've done the handstand, they're gonna go and get a double whammy because yeah, you will be doing another round of the what? The Bakasana. Up. Uh, they may hold it and then progress this to a jumping handstand. Or they can just settle the bakasana. Or, yeah, you can go slowly down good, and do another round of the bakasana. Right. Shake it up. Right, let me do it. Breathing through it. Power. Inhale forward and lift. And stay. Thousand and five. Four. Three. Two. One. All right. Down the floor and stretch to the back. Down with dog. All right. Some alternate leg lift to decompress the low back. And a few side to side. All right. So I will keep following that structure. Yeah, but I will progress and transition to a different theme. All right. Still, yeah, part of lightness, but it's more of decompressing now the spine. Yeah, right knee, pigeons again through between the hands. Beautiful. All right, moving hip to hip. You can spiral to the other side. Lengthening this side. All right, and then rise, both legs in front, right, and roll on the back. Good, good. Now I will cross the legs, either the half padmasana, or they can cross to a reclining sukhasana, or for those who can do the reclining or the supta padmasana. And I will climb the arms long behind. And a bit of a sway. And then this now combination of hip opener. Nice and deep. And also lower back release after deflection because I'm balancing most of the elements we practiced the first half are flexing element. So this one counters those actions. All right, and I settle. And this is also recovery after the dynamic ones. And transitioning yeah, to the next stage. I always finish with back bends. Yeah, that's common in my classes. Yeah. They open the desk of our spine. Because after the back bend, yeah, do the pranayama. Okay, uncross them. All right, up and down you go. All right. Yeah. If the body is light, we can bring this up to your sitting. And then from there, you can fold over one side and then push away the Adho Mukha Svanasana. All right, and then bending and stretching, alternate leg lift. All right, and from there, kneeling position, walking them. So if you're teaching an hour, uh, an hour's class, yeah, maybe 
um, 40 minutes max for your physical observances, five minutes for your introduction, and another maybe 10 minutes for your pranayam, or you may skip the pranayam. Yeah, really depending. Yeah, but for me, yeah, as much as I can, I tackle yeah, the bigger com or the main components. Yeah, asana. Yeah, after asana, you have the pranayam, and after the pranayam, the shavasana. Or well, sometimes I'll do you know, the centering at the beginning, which is which can include the shavasana. Or I would do shavasana in between the big ones. And the ustrasana generally is always part of my sequence. And there are modifications here if they can't do or you can offer yeah, the half, the ardra. Yeah, Ustrasana, or they can do the arm supported Ustrasana or Kamo. But I, I'm not a proponent of tucking the toes because that will tighten your back. Yeah. I would rather use a block yeah, than tuck the toes. And that way your hips remain upright uh, and then there's no compression in your low back. All right, beautiful. All right, free your back bend, and then up and down you go. Now, you might ask, can I flow like the vinyasa? Of course, yeah, definitely, especially if you, that's your style. Yeah, you can flow through a vinyasa, for example. Yeah, but you don't want to be wearing out and then do too much chaturangas, yeah, because that may your head, yeah, some sensitive joints in the low back and the hips and the shoulders. And then for me, circular motions suit better. All right. Okay. And then pigeoning the left knee again through so you can change sides. Now, see if you notice, I'm doing the elements twice. Yeah. Asymmetrical, right and left. In between them, I do symmetrical. And then settle. And that's how I feel the energy flows within. Yeah. It doesn't want to go from one side to the next. Somehow you need to <laughs> draw everything to the midline. Yeah. Amazing. When the energetic body is open, it'll lead you instinctively through those. Yeah, inherent or primal activity. Yeah. All right, and from there, yeah, body to the front. Yeah. We can do a few of this and then preparation for your suptas. Suptas are reclining or lying down. All right, up and down. Okay, and crossing the other one. Yeah, or the full. Bada or Padmasana, reclining. A lengthen side body. And I like you're forming a deep well there, like a gentle Udhyana Bandha, done on the inhalation. Yeah, to lengthen, you can use your hands yeah. Yeah, to adjust your lower abdomen muscles. Now oh, feels good this one. Beautiful. And then settle a moment. So static positions, even though you're not flowing, yeah, there's always this room for adjustment. Yeah, feeling the edges of the position and adjusting you know, body parts affected by the subtle movement within. And I use my tongue a lot. <laughs> I'm gaining access to those deep pockets. All right, untangle, up and down. Right, you can do one leg stretch and then the other side extend to, or you can just slightly bounce that leg up. Yeah, to free yeah, some more tight spots there around the femur bone. 
All right. Good. Up and down. Yeah. Again, be careful with this rocket motion. Yeah. You have to make sure you instruct yeah, your beginners to tuck to the side and slowly up to the sitting before they assume the position of the Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then lifting, uh, alternate legs. All right. Okay. And then down the knee. Yeah, Ustrasana number two. Yeah, you can also walk in first. Yeah, and a few hip to hip and circles. Okay. Yeah. So the first one, the first try is always your like, yeah, your bad try. And the second one, generally more open, so you can feel and express the lightness of the technique. Yeah, you may rub the shoulder around. It's not always picture perfect. Our bodies are not always symmetrical. You, know, you might feel you need to lift the side even if you're there already, so you can access. That's also. All right, and then do it again. There are many ways of doing the Ashrasana. Yeah. You can do prayer, you can do an arm at a time, or you can do a mouth swinging yeah, back and forward yeah, until you feel that lightness. And draw up and reach back. All right, you can use the hand you know, to let the rest of the spine open. Externally, roll the arm bones back and down, and then scoop and then roll the shoulder blades under yeah, to give your chest another puff or push. All right, and rise, oh, feels good. And up and down, you might lightly sway, and circle around. Beautiful. All right, and back to your downward dog with leg left. All right, and settle All right in here. Before we do the cross leg, preparation for the pranayam, one round kapal body. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale and exhale. All right, through the cross. And you can transition to sit through. All right. So, Kasana. Yeah, and the body is open, the spine open, the hips, the brain open. And then, depending on yeah, your progression, depending on yeah, your students, depending on the theme, you can take a moment, maybe one minute of going back yeah, to this natural rhythm, allowing the activity to settle and to its balance and lighter space, an opportunity for you as well to instruct your students, to you know, gather the props to support their cross-legged sitting position. Yeah, maybe some of them would like to use the wall so they can lean against the wall. The props, this is your opportunity to do that. All right. And then to close the session, let's do maybe three, five minutes of Nati Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing. Yeah, so this is just like a guide. You can extend, yeah longer and, and maybe do a shavasana. You can skip the pranayama. All right, prepare the hand, right thumb of the right hand, blocks the right nostril. And then let's take a couple of breaths through this left side, just to get the rhythm. 
All right, ready? Inhale through that left. And stay. Thousand five, four, three, two, one. Ring finger closest left. Exhale through the right. Inhale, right nostril. Stay. Four, three, two, one. Swap. Exhale left. All right, I would normally guide my students together you know, for the first two repetitions. Inhale that left side. And staying. Nodding the head to the chest. Lift the spine upright. And the shoulders relax. Three, two, one. Swap. Exhale through the right. Inhale, right nostril. Lift your optic muscles up between the eyebrows. You may lightly climp the forehead. Stay. Four, three, two, one. Change. Exhale. Now feel your rhythm now. Practice your own time, your own rhythm. If you choose to lengthen the retention at the top, make sure you can sustain uniformly yeah, until the finish of the session. And I will leave you in silence and you will hear my voice again so we can come back together. And let's practice together again. Now exhale the side. Yeah. Inhale the side. And stay. That's in five, four, three, two, one. Swap. Exhale the other one. Inhaling. Stay. Five, four, three, two, one. Change. Exhaling. All right. One more per nostril. Breathing in. Eyes left between the eyebrows inside the brain. 
make it a hypnotic experience. Two, one, change, exhaling. And last time this side, breathing in. Stay inside. House and four. House and three. House and two. One, change, and exhale. All right. And let the hands rest. And then breathe naturally. You may practice Shavasana, lead your students to your Shavasana, and then stay there you know, for the remaining time you have for that particular session. Good. For now, let's finish. I'm yeah, reading in, I'm slipped. Good. And exhale. Yeah, now, I'm comfortable, I'm confident that I will be able to teach my class in an hour's time. Yeah. Lightly. Now, worry free you know, because I've practiced it myself. I know how to build up the sequence. I know how to modify, change the elements if I need to. Yeah. So, everyone enjoys. I yeah, have a meaningful, rewarding experience as a teacher. And I know my students <laughs> would benefit from the lessons too. All right, breathing in, eyes lift. And then seal the hands together and the rest of the chest and the head folds. Well, thank you for joining me. Namaste, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.